Welcome to Spinelli Speaks. Hope you are doing well. Today is my February wrap up. I'm really excited. However, I did not get as many books read as I thought I would. Um, I did get a few audiobooks in that I didn't anticipate and I really enjoyed them so I'm excited to share those with you. Um, but I just had some personal issues arise that really just made me kind of feel like in a reading slump and then I got really sick. And you know you would think when you're at home sick you're gonna bundle up in bed and read a book but really like I slept all day and when I was awake I tried so hard to read and I just my mind just wasn't there and so I kind of just caught up on some booktube videos and it was oh I'm so happy I'm like I'm still feeling like a little bit of the symptoms I'm still kind of congested my throat sometimes still hurts I'm a little bit achy yet but overall way better than I was a couple of days ago. So I want to get right on into it and tell you a little bit about what I've read this month and what I wasn't able to get to. So if you've watched my previous videos and when I reorganized my shelves I kind of talked about this top shelf being the books that I'm going to be reading or have read or are in the mix. And as you can see I've got a, quite a few in the middle here and these are all the books that I didn't actually get to this <laughs> past month. So I was not able to get to year one by Nora Roberts or ever green tidings from the Bumgartners. Um, I actually got, I started reading this when I was a little bit sick and I got, you know, about this far, not very far at all. Um, it isn't bad so far. I'm still trying to navigate through what the book is going to be about. Um, there's a little bit of foreshadowing which is nice but overall I think it's going to be pretty interesting so I'm going to continue to read that. Um, same for uh, Nora Roberts and the other books that I didn't get to. I will continue to read those. I think it's important for me that I you know stick to what I say I'm going to do, hold myself accountable. So what I'm going to do is just kind of move them into my March TBR and um, you can uh, follow up on that in my March uh, TBR video. So um, I also did not get to the 100 year old man who climbed out the window and disappeared. I also did not get to Alice I Have Been. I did read Alice in Wonderland which we'll get to soon but I did not get to any of those books. So that was four books out of the, I think I picked nine last month or this month and just did not, did not get to them. <laughs> um, I did do some reading in London and I don't know why I do not have a darn bookmark in this book because I mean it's ginormous. How do you remember where you are? Um, but bookmarks are for quitters so <laughs> I think I got into like the second chapter of this book um, so I think I am still in the chapter called Londinium um, but I think I'm pretty close to the end of that chapter. Um, each chapter seems to be about 50 pages long. In February I should have gotten to page 200. I am not yet there so I'm still very far behind in this book so I'm going to keep going forward on that um, and see where I can get from there. So those four books are going to come right on over and this one's just an ongoing book so we'll keep that here. That's going to come over on my March TBR list so we'll go ahead and stick that over here and that's what I'll be reading in March. But let's get back to what we're uh, what I have read in February. So in February I did end up reading seven books. So two of those were audiobooks and the other five were um, physical books. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through these like I usually do from my lowest ratings to my highest ratings. I actually didn't have any one star or any five star reviews this past month which is good but also kind of like hmm, no five stars. Um, so the first book that I'm going to talk about was actually the book that I read with my book club and that was The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. This book, so you can see, it was 521 pages long. Needless to say, 
I don't think hardly any of my um, book club people were, was, were able to get through the full book. A lot of them started and DNF'd. A lot started and just has, haven't been able to get through it. I will say this took me several times to get started. I felt the beginning of this book was super boring and I had to set it down and pick it back up several times before I really got into a section where I felt like the pace was picking up, I felt like the story was picking up, and I felt like I cared about what the characters were going to be doing or um, fighting, I guess. So this book is about a woman who is referred to as the chemist. And she is out on the run from this government agency that she works had worked for and they keep trying to kill her they essentially keep trying to send assassins to kill her and she uses chemical properties to kill those people i guess and she's killed three so far so there's been three attempts on her life including the very first one which was a lab explosion so one of her contacts at the government agency contacts her and says that there's been a change in the structure and they want her to come back basically and they give her a suspect to interrogate uh, on the um, understanding that this person is a biochemical terrorist, someone who's trying to introduce like a disease in the United States to kill millions of people. So she finds this person and, and essentially she's a uh, torturer, I guess you could say. She interrogates people and uses chemical based things to do so. Um, and then it turns out that the person that she has basically kidnapped isn't actually the person that she was like it was all kind of a ruse, but the person that she kidnapped is actually a twin brother of the person that was actually in these photographs that she had. That's just like the first hundred pages. <laughs> then you get into them kind of this threesome of these crime fighting people that kind of go through the whole story and two of them are like falling in love, but it's so lame because it's like really you're gonna fall in love with the person who just tortured you for like seven hours and then oh I don't know it was so bad like I really didn't like <laughs> I gave this a two one it was about 300 pages too long I, mean, I like Stephanie Meyer's writing style not the length but I feel like she is easy to read you know and I think what hurts her in her career is everyone is comparing everything that she writes to the Twilight Saga. And not that the Twilight Saga was good, you know, if you're a teenager it was the best book since sliced bread, but as an adult and you're reading her books as an adult, it's almost as if you find nuances of it trying to be a young adult novel because the characters who are falling in love, the way in which it's happening is so juvenile. It just never seems right to me when I, the whole time I was reading this book. Then there's this whole like portion of the book where they're on this dog ranch and the whole time I'm just like, if any of these dogs die, I'm gonna be really mad, which is really goofy because people care more about animals than they do about human beings, which is, really bizarro but I mean when you're reading something like this like I don't want to hear about any of these dogs being killed. <laughs> so anywho I gave this one a two. I wasn't a big fan. Um, I have to talk about it with my book club tonight which <laughs> I'm looking forward to because <laughs> I think I'm the only one that read it. Um, but needless to say it was okay writing style. It was an okay storyline. It had okay characters and I it was just okay. It wasn't anything that I would come back to. It's not something I would recommend. Um, but it is what it is. So that was Stephanie Myers, The Chemist. 
Um, so that was the only two that I had had. Um, these next ones I gave all threes. So the first book that I read this month was A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I gave this a three. I thought overall the um, story was pretty uh, unique and creative. Um, I definitely, like, in my mind's eye while I was reading this, I just saw the movie. Like, all I, every, every time I read a new page, I, like, the movie was running through my mind. So, that being said, either A, the, the people who made the movie did a really good job of, of doing an adaptation, meaning they really stuck true to the book, or I just couldn't get the movie out of my head. Either or, all I did was kind of see the movie as I was reading this. So for me, I couldn't really pick out anything that was different, any nuances. I mean, realistically, like I said, all I kept seeing was the movie pieces. Other than the president character being more likable in the book, like in the movie he's played by, um, gosh, what's his name? Sa uh, Sam Rockwell. And I love Sam Rockwell, don't get me wrong. And his character in the movie is super funny and like obnoxious and someone you just don't want to be around. But in the book, he, he is obnoxious, however likable. Like, I feel like there's something about him that we'll learn later in other books that make him more of a likable character, which is probably the one thing that really stuck out to me as being something that I did enjoy about this book. But otherwise, I really just, the movie would just kept running through my mind over and over again. So good. I would definitely recommend it. I gave it a three. I think I'm going to like the other ones better just because I haven't seen a movie for those ones. Um, but overall, I really like the creati creativity of the book. Um, and I liked that for me being someone who doesn't really read a lot of sci-fi or like space related books, I really liked this. I it, I feel like I didn't have to know a lot about, you know, sci-fi in order to really enjoy this. So I like that. So I gave this one a three. Um, the next book I gave a three um, is one I just actually finished today. Um, I wanted to read Alice in Wonderland for some reason. I don't know why I picked these books, but in February I decided I was going to do some Alice in Wonderland and then I ended up seeing Alice in Wonderland like everywhere. I mean Google just had it as their their main screen just a couple days ago and I should have looked up why but um, anyways the the um, version that I have is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. So I think these actually always go together which you don't typically see when you see um, them in other like movies or anything. They usually break them up and there it is two parts. Now the for the first part so Alice's Adventures in Wonderland I liked it. It was okay. I feel like Alice is really bratty. Like she interrupts everyone when they're speaking. I mean, every single time anyone opens their mouth, she's interrupting and then she gets upset when they like chide her for that. And I'm just like, but Alice, you interrupted them. If you would have just been quiet and let them speak, then you wouldn't be going this back and forth battle of who's being rude and who's not being rude. So that was a little annoying to me, like, because you always hear, like, Alice is, like, you know, the character everyone remembers from their childhood. And I was like, she's kind of a jerk. <laughs> but anyway, so I liked the, I liked the first one. I feel like, cover your ears, Laura. It's very whimsy and whimsical. Okay, Laura, you're good. And has that magical, you know, setting. And you see a lot of those little nuances that you... I feel like I've said nuances like seven times in this video. Okay, I'm going to stop doing that. But anyways, you see a lot of what you remember from like the old Disney movie. And even now in the newer Disney movies, which I feel did a way better job of adapting this to what it really was. But overall, I really liked Through the Looking Glass. I feel that was more of a mature style of Alice's adventures. I feel like she herself was more mature, even though I believe she's like seven and a half exactly. And I really enjoyed the chessboard aspect of the story. She supposedly, through her adventure there, is moving as if she's part of a chessboard, which I felt like was really unique and I really liked that. 
Um, so I feel like overall, I truly liked Through the Looking Glass far more than I liked um, Allison's Adventures in Wonderland. Um, I think overall, the Disney movie did a nice job. There are little bits and pieces that when I was reading through, I was like, oh my gosh, they included that in the books. Like um, when the red, uh, when the rabbit is yelling at Marianne in the movie, you're just like, who the heck is Marianne? But it's it's from the book. Um, the bread and buttered insect that was flying around. I mean, all of those actually come from the book, which I thought was really cool. I always had thought maybe it was a Disney thing, but it, it really truly is from the book. So I did give that one a three. Um, then I have the rest of the books that I read are all fours, which is really great. Like I said before, I didn't have any fives. Um, but for some of the fours that I have, I read um, Pages and Company, The Book Wanderers, which if you look this up on Goodreads, it's actually listed as Tilly and The Book Wanderers. Tilly is the main character's name, um, and this book is super cute. I really enjoyed it. It's a middle grade book. Um, I think a lot of people are actually going to be reading this next month for middle grade March, um, but this book was super cute. So this young girl is a young girl living in like the London area with her grandparents and they own a bookstore which is Pages and Company. Um, so her last name is Pages and they uh, her mother basically disappeared when she was a baby and she never really understands why and then she starts to see some fictional characters. She sees Anne from Green Gables, she sees Alice from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and then she um, essentially finds out a little bit more about what happened to her mother. And what it is, is this family is able to jump or wander into books. And her mother had at one point been in and out of a little princess and without giving too much away uh, we find out more about what may have happened there and why she disappeared. So it's really good. I felt as an adult I really enjoyed the story. I felt like it wasn't too young but it also kept to that age you know, understanding of things. So I really enjoyed it. I'm excited for more of the books. I really liked all the characters. She has a friend that lives across the street and they kind of go at this together and overall like really excited to read more of these books. So if you're reading this this month in March, I hope I didn't give too much away, but you will enjoy this book. So I gave this one a four. Then I also read a book called The Book Charmer. Uh, this one is by Karen Hawkins. This is uh, first in a step uh, in a series, so it'll be part of a series. It's not yet um, out or published. This is the first one. I think it was published in 2019. <clears throat> but um, I liked this book. I gave it a four. I felt like it was really interesting as far as the character development. It touches on a couple of different topics such as friendship, love, um, not so much on the love side but more on the friendship side, big on community. So being part of a community and what that means to you and the people in that community. It also touches a little bit on, you know, dementia and Alzheimer's and, you know, how to deal with that if you yourself have a family member that is suffering from that disease. Um, and it, it just really was very cute. My only problem with this book and why I gave it a four is I feel like the title really doesn't fit with the book. And you might find that that is something small, but realistically going into this book when you have the title the book charmer and you find out that the book charmer is Sarah who you start to read about and then it totally changes to really focusing in on this other character whose name is Grace the whole book is about Grace it's not about Sarah who is the book charmer so the whole book, I mean, you get Sarah's point of view from time to time and you get um, another character's name, Travis, point of view. But the main person that this book revolves around is Grace, who is not the book charmer. So for me, that irritated me because in the entire 
book, I was waiting for something to happen for Sarah. I was waiting for Sarah and Blair, who is a, uh, the sheriff, for something to happen there because the book is called The Book Charmer. So the book should be about the book charmer, should it not? So that irritated me because... I kept waiting for it to turn to go back to Sarah's point of view and, and turn and go to Sarah's story, but it didn't. It was all about Grace, which is fine. I, I liked Grace's story and I liked I liked the story of that. However, then the, this book, because I, it will be part of a series, this book should have been called Dove Pond, which is the town that they live in. So this one should have been called Dove Pond, and then the next book that's coming up, which I can only assume will be about Sarah, should have been called The Book Charmer. So that irritated me, and it kind of ruined the, the, the premise of the book for me because my mind kept thinking I had to go to a different place instead of just focusing on Grace the entire time. So that is the only reason why I gave it a four, because I felt like the title really um, to, like put me on the wrong wrong path, and then I couldn't really deviate from that because I was so set on this is about the book charmer so gave it a four though it was really good like I said um it's really about friendship and community and I really like that um there's a little bit of love in there but it's not there's no steam at all which is fine like you don't have to have that in every single book um but it was very well written as far as you know getting to know somebody and for the right reasons so I liked that so that I that I also gave a four and then the other two books that I don't have physically because I had them in audiobooks, and I'll put them here for you. Um, the first being The Watchmaker's Daughter by C.J. Archer. Um, these are fantasy novels um, set in like 1890 London, and it's about this woman who is essentially a watchmaker. She was a kind of an assistant to her father, but her father has passed, and through a horrible circumstance, her was fiance ended up inheriting the watchmaker's shop her shop her store her father's store and then basically dumping her <laughs> and she is like destitute I mean a woman in London at that time if you didn't have someone that was caring for you you owned nothing you hardly owned yourself so um she ends up meeting Mr. Glass, who is an American, and kind of falling in line with him and his crew. Um, there's a Willie, which is a woman who doesn't really like to be a woman. She's more like wears man's clothes and talks like a man and no one's gonna put me down and all that kind of thing. And then you have Cyclops, who has a patch over one eye, thus the name. And then there's Duke. And then later on we... Um, find an aunt who is Miss Glass and it's just a really interesting group of people. They're super funny and lovable and this particular story is about um, you find out that Mr. Glass has a magical watch that basically is keeping him alive but it's broken and they're trying to figure out how to find the watchmaker that originally gave him the watch and so you find out that there's magic and magicians but they are basically shunned and kind of um, have been prosecuted um, many many years um, before then so the this group of people are fighting against the guild, which is the Watchmakers Guild, and trying to help um, Matthew Glass with his watch. I'm not going to give any more spoilers away because they're... I, mean, I love this book. Now, reason why I didn't give this book a five is because I listened to it in audio and the narrator was so bad. I was laughing like half... like throughout half of the the whole thing. I mean, they were making a different voice for every single character. So the main character, who is just an English woman, was fine. But then, when you got to any of the American voices, I mean, they seriously sounded like John Wayne on some kind of steroid or something. It was so 
bad. And then if you met like an old English man, it was like it was so bad. So it was com it was more comical. So I loved the the story, but every time she would change her voice, I would just be like laugh out loud. What is happening? I can't even focus on what you're saying because it's so ridiculous. Um, but I really did like the book. Then I um, started to read the second in that series, which was The Map Maker's Apprentice. Again, same group of people. This time uh, they have um, been tasked to find a young boy who has disappeared. And he um, is a map maker. He, they find out that he was also a magician. So they are going through and following the leads on that. And again, I don't want to give too much away. So again, very, very good. Gave it a four. Uh, this particular one was good, but I liked the first one a lot more. They did change the narrator on this one, which is really good, because um, she's better. There's still some comical pieces where I was, where I, you're just kind of like, that sounds really silly. Like, why are you making Americans sound like that? It's just weird. But overall really enjoyed the series. I started listening to the third one which you'll see in my March TBR. I'm about halfway through and that one is called The Apothecary's Poison. So here I'm thinking ooh, I'm gonna be done with this. It's a trilogy right? I'm, gonna, I'm so happy that I'll be done and finally maybe something will happen between Miss Steele which is the watchmaker that we met in the first one. She stays with them and then M Matthew Glass you guys, it's 10 books in this series. 10. On the one hand, awesome. I love these books. They're very interesting. I like the care. I love the characters. But then I'm like, 10 books? 10 books. I'm gonna have to wait to find out with these two characters for 10 books. So you're going to be hearing about this a lot because I'm like addicted to listening to these books and right now they only have the first three on my Hoopla app. So I'm going to have to either get them in physical copy from the library, pray they are there, or I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe I might, I hate doing ebooks, but... I'm going to have to figure it out because like, I'm addicted to these two characters. So um, needless to say, I gave that one a four. So like I said, I read seven books, five physical, two audio. Um, I didn't have any one stars or five stars, um, but gave twos, threes, and fours. So I am ready for March and what that brings, all of the books that I didn't finish in February, I will move on to March and go from there. So if you are still here, thank you. I know that kind of got a little bit long-winded. I got a little ranty in there a few times, but go ahead and hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and you know how it goes, guys. Happy reading. Bye! Bye!